Welcome back to ACSS 101. In this video, we are going to take a look at a feature called Content Grid. Now, this is actually gonna be a two-part series. The first video, this one, is gonna look at the basics of Content Grid, and our follow-up video is gonna look at the advanced use of Content Grid. But let's start here. What is Content Grid and why is it valuable? Well, Content Grid gives you an alternative approach to vertical layouts. It's not actually a grid that you might imagine hearing the word grid. It just uses CSS grid and it gives us some advantages over a traditional kind of section group structure, okay? It's, it's actually best if you just look at an example. So let's go ahead and share the screen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a traditional section and then we'll do a content grid section and we'll kind of compare the two, okay? So I'm gonna add the traditional section. Let's call this traditional section. There's a container, so I'm gonna add a heading and I'm gonna add text to it. I'm actually gonna add another container and inside that container, I'm gonna add an image. And this image I'm gonna select from our media gallery. We'll just use this watch right here. We'll wrap it in a figure tag and we'll go 100% width and we will give it an aspect ratio of 16 over six. And I'm just gonna look at this on the front end. So let's go ahead and open a new tab. And this is exactly what you would expect to see with a traditional kind of section structure layout using inner containers, right? Okay, let's go ahead and duplicate that traditional section and we'll call this content grid section. Okay, we're gonna do all of the same things, except I'm gonna take the outer section right here and I'm gonna add a class called Content Grid. I'm gonna save and I'm gonna go view on the front end and we see that we get an exact replica, even though the structure is actually quite different. And I'm gonna show you how it's different under the hood. But before I do that, I wanna add a BG of ultra light on this one, just so you can visually distinguish between the two, right? Okay, so let's inspect the traditional section. We have the traditional section and we see that we have our two containers and we have a gutter and there's really nothing fancy going on. But let me come down here and inspect the content grid section. And I'm gonna click the grid right here so that it gives you the highlights. Let's get this out of the way. And you can actually see our grid structure. There's actually zones, one of them says full, one of them says feature max, one of them says feature, one of them says content. It's hard to see because the labels kind of over, they overlap each other, but these are named grid areas and you can actually use these named grid areas to determine where content lives, where content starts, and where content ends. And you can see that immediately out of the box, you have a lot more flexibility over a traditional uh, section structure. Now, how do we actually use this and what do the advantages look like? Well, we can ask a simple question and we can solve this question to see what the advantages are. The question is, what would need to happen if I wanted this image right here to span the full width edge to edge in my section? Let's look at the, the traditional approach. Let's look at the content grid approach, okay? So let's go back into the builder. If I was gonna make this go 100% wide, I would have to go to this container and I would have to say, okay, you need to be 100% wide. Now, let's see what happens. Just let's go one step at a time and see what's happened here, right? It's going 100% wide, but it's not touching the edge. Why is that? Well, because the section actually has a gutter and the gutter is preventing any content in that section from touching the edge of the screen. So what would I have to do next? I would have to remove the gutter. Now there's multiple ways to do that. I'm just gonna go in here and physically put a zero on the left and a zero on the right. Let's go ahead and hit save. Let's refresh. I now have an image that is going full width, edge to edge, but I've created another problem by removing that gutter. This content right here, does not have a gutter anymore. Now, the only way you're gonna see this is on mobile. So I'm gonna go back into the builder and I'm just gonna put, uh, I'm just gonna click this breakpoint and preview this breakpoint. You can see, oh, well, I solved one problem, right? My image is going edge to edge. I created 
a new problem. This content right here is now touching the edge of the screen. So I'm gonna have to find a way to solve that problem, right? Well, we don't have to do all of this stuff. We don't have to do all of this, all right? Let's go down here to the content grid section and see exactly how easy this is in a content grid layout structure. So I'm gonna grab my container right here. And instead of doing 100% width or removing a gutter or anything else, I'm gonna go to this grid column box right here. And I'm just gonna type the word full. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And we're gonna go back to the front end. And you can see in my content grid section, it is spanning edge to edge. Now the question is, do I have the same gutter problem up here? Well, let's take a look. Let's click on the breakpoint and no, you can see that my gutter is actually still intact. Okay, now there's actually more tricks up its sleeve than just that. There are times where you want something aligned to the left edge, but you want it to stop at the edge of the website's content width. Is that possible using Content Grid? Is it possible using the traditional section structure? It actually would be very, very difficult using the traditional grid structure. Not impossible, but very, very difficult. But with Content Grid, it is very, very easy. So I'm gonna take that container that I was saying full, and I'm gonna say full slash content end. Okay, so I'm saying go from the full zone, the, the edge of the screen, and end at the end of the content zone. We'll talk about the zones in just a minute, but let's go ahead and hit save. Let's refresh and look, touching the left edge, extends all the way to the right side of the content. How do we know that's the right side of the content? Let me put a background color on here, a primary. I know it's very ugly, but at least you can visualize. That is perfect alignment with the end of the content width of the website, right? Now we could do the opposite. We could come in here. Okay, let's go to our container. And instead of full content end, let's say content start full. Okay, and let's hit save and let's go refresh. And look at this. So it's starting at the edge of content width and it's ending at full. It's ending at the edge of the screen. Now, there are other zones. Let me pull up the documentation for content grid. I do want to refer you. You absolutely should read the documentation for content grid. It goes over all this stuff. So there's a content zone inside of a content grid, and that is the default zone. Every piece of content, you actually don't even need containers. Any piece of content is going to be placed in the content zone by default. Next is a feature zone, which is a little bit bigger than the content zone. Next is a feature max zone, which is another feature zone that's even bigger than the feature zone. There's a full width zone. There's a full width safe zone, which we're gonna talk about in the next video uh, using the advanced content grid. And then you can put a custom width on any element as well. So you have full flexibility anywhere in there. What I wanna take a look at now are feature and feature max, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to this container right here, and instead of content start full, all of that, we're gonna say feature. And we're just gonna hit save, and we're gonna come in, and we're gonna see that feature is a little bit bigger than the normal content width. Now, how much bigger is it? Well. Let's open the ACSS dashboard, go to layout, go to content grid, and we can see that we can define our own values for the feature zone. In fact, I'll just hold shift and start hitting up and you're gonna see this expand or contract. I have full control and I can live preview where my feature zone lives, right? I'm gonna go back to 50 pixels. I'm gonna hit save. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that container. That'll give us another image. And this one I'm going to place in feature max and we'll hit save and we'll go to the front end and refresh. And you can see that max is bigger. Now, what you have to understand about feature max is that it's always the amount bigger than feature. Okay. So let me go back to layout content grid. So you see feature is 50 pixels. Feature max is 100 pixels, but really feature max is 100 pixels bigger than the feature zone. So notice that when I change the feature width, I'm gonna change this to 150, both of them get bigger. Feature will never be bigger than feature max. Feature max is always the biggest because it is calculated based on feature. 
But if I want feature max to be just a little bit bigger than feature, I could change it to 50, for example. And now it's 50 pixels bigger, and that's 50 pixels on each side, okay? 50 pixels bigger visually than feature. And so I have these two levers that I can play with. I can put this at 50 pixels and that, that one at 50 pixels, right? They're not equal because feature max is 50 pixels bigger than feature, right? It's always based on what feature is, but you have full control over this. And we'll take a look at why feature and feature max are so important in the next video when we talk about advanced uses of content grid and non-traditional uses of content grid or areas, I guess, where it's really designed to be a powerhouse layout system for you. The examples that we're looking at so far in this video are very basic, even though they're very valuable, right? The things I've already shown you are very difficult to achieve in a traditional layout structure, but very, very easy to achieve in a content grid layout structure. Okay, but I wanted to go over feature width feature with max. Um, I also wanna show you the utility classes for these things, okay? So let's go ahead and remove this grid column instruction and this grid column instruction. And I wanna show you, let's just duplicate this container again. So if I just want it to live in a specific zone, I don't wanna combine zones together. I can just use utility classes. We have utility classes called content dash, and you could say a feature, feature max, full, and full safe. We're just gonna take a look, a look at the first three for right now. So on this container, I'll do full. On this container, I'll do content feature. And on this container, I will do content feature max, content feature max, okay? And let's just save and let's go back to the front end. Uh, yes, let's take a, let's reload, no problem. Okay, so there's our full because it's using the content full utility class. Here is feature and here is feature max. So this is the same effect, but done with utility classes instead of using that grid content uh, column or yeah, uh, I'll go back and show you, right? Uh, so right here, this grid column box in bricks. Also, this grid column box is not always present. Let me show you, because you, you do wanna know the grid column shorthand because uh, like I said, that is not always present. For example, if I put an image in this section by itself with no container, you're not gonna see that grid column input. It's not anywhere. No, you're not, you're not gonna find it anywhere, okay? Um, but if we go back to the front end, let's take a look. It is the, the content width of the website by default. Why? Because we are in a content grid, right? So now I can take this and I can come down to, I could use the utility class for sure. Like I could say uh, full, all right? Uh, so I'm sorry, it's content double dash full. And then we'll go ahead and hit save. We'll go back to the front end and we'll see that it does go full, right? But what if you wanted to do it without the utility class, okay? You would have to do it with regular CSS. So you go to CSS, root, and you would type grid column and you could say full and then hit save and then come out, refresh, it's full. And just to prove to you that it works, I'll do full content end, save, refresh. And now if we close this, we could see that it is touching the left edge, but only going to the right side of the content zone. All right, so you could do this with CSS, you could do it with the utility classes, you can combine them together to create little combinations like start here, end here, start here, end here. Uh, and you could do that with any piece of content inside of the content grid. This is the basics of content grid. In the second video, which we'll do next, I will show you an advanced use case for Content Grid. And in the meantime, I would heavily, heavily, heavily urge you to read our detailed documentation on Content Grid it is a very, very powerful layout system. You should absolutely know how to use it. You should be using it whenever it is suitable and appropriate to use. It solves tremendous challenges that are very difficult to solve with a conventional section-based approach or layout-based approach, like a flex layout-based approach. Um, so play around with it. Experiment with it. Don't be afraid of it, right? Get in there, get your hands dirty, and see what it can do, and you will start to get the hang of it, and you will start to see, wow, this really does solve some really, really uh, important challenges and it solves them very fast and very easy. And then watch the follow-up video for the advanced use of Content Grid. That one will 
blow your mind, uh, and you will come to love Content Grid. It is it is a a feature that does not exist in any other framework that I know of, and it is one that you may absolutely get addi addicted to. So I will see you in the follow-up video, video number two on Content Grid.